In 2018, lions were reintroduced into the Zambezi Delta landscape. For the past few years, I've been monitoring how this lion population has expanded. And it's been incredible to see how the population is thriving in what was their historic range. But I've always wondered if cheetah ever occurred here. So historically, cheetah occurred right across Africa and Asia. They were one of the most widely occurring large predator species. But over the past 13,000 years, the historical range has been reduced to 9% of what it used to be. Before we can proceed with any reintroduction, the ethical thing to do is to prove that cheetah occurred here historically. I started sifting through literature on English hunters that moved through this area in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And there was a book written called Wild Game Hunting on the Zambezi, written by a chap called Malgam. Goodness gracious, there it was. You know, a cheetah, page 178. Cheetahs, or hunting leopards, are not very numerous in the Zambezi Valley, occurring most plentifully where reebok and other small antelopes are common. I have also seen them in the Melange district of Portuguese East Africa. So then I thought, OK, we've got this, but we just have to make sure that the area that he's referencing is in Marameo. And I went onto Google Maps and I typed that name in. And I couldn't believe it. It's practically where the Zambezi River goes into the sea. I mean, it's right at the mouth of the Delta. That was our historical record. Conservation means the conserving of the entire biodiversity of an ecosystem. I've been alarmed in the last couple of decades at how fast these wild areas have been shrinking, how fast different species have found themselves on the brink of extinction. Cheetah used to occur here, they should occur here now. And if it's within our power, they absolutely will. With proof that we had cheetah in this area historically, we now had to embrace the next step of the project, which was to go out and capture 12 wild cheetah. In Southern Africa, and we're working with the same cheetah subspecies. So we can move cheetah pretty much anywhere between this geographical region without breaking the genetic rules. In some cases, you deal with individuals that are habituated, and it's a simple case of identifying where that animal is, driving the vehicle in, getting close to it, and darting. Yeah, this is the first of ten in the next five days. Oh, very nice. Okay. <laughs> so my job is to ensure that cheetah populations across all 65 meta population reserves where we work are demographically stable and genetically healthy, so that there's not inbreeding. So we had to go and collect these 12 animals from conservation landscapes across Southern Africa. The most difficult cheetahs to capture are the uncollared individuals. Those are the animals that are running around on a 60,000 hectare game reserve. You've got no idea where they are, but you've got to capture them and relocate them.
we decided on holding them at a central quarantine boma manned by an experienced wildlife veterinarian called Dr. Mike Toft. We got all 10 South African animals into that boma in Zululand. We had to get the permits together. Permits to catch cheetah, permits to move cheetah, permits to export cheetah, permit to import cheetah. Who was going to provide the aircraft? How were those aircraft going to actually physically carry the cheetah? Who was going to have the vision and the foresight to fund this operation? Here we go. Thanks, Bella. You're at last. Man, long time, eh? So Just good a to hug. see you. Oh, you've got to do a hug. <laughs> in 2018, when we brought the lions in, we didn't have any idea whether it would be a success or whether it wouldn't be. We've got now three times more lions than we had when we brought them in. Who would have thought in my lifetime I would be moving lions and cheetahs to save them? I never thought that. In fact, I never thought I'd ever be in Africa in my entire life. Here I am. Reintroductions are inherently risky affairs. And as a result, we lose about 15% of the cheetah that we'd relocate between protected areas. For this particular reintroduction, we looked no further than Dr. Peter Caldwell. Of the 6,000 cheetahs that he's immobilized and relocated, he's lost only one animal. I've just loaded my darts. I'm going to do one solitary female and then the three Pilansberg ones. They're all lying nicely under the tree over there, so let's make our way over there. Okay. First dart of the solitary female is in. We're doing the other three now. There's very many variables movement, distance, obviously the weight of the dart you've got to take into consideration. They're sleeping very nicely, we're monitoring them really well. We've collected blood for DNA and then we've microchipped and then I injected them with some antibiotic just to prevent an infection and we're rehydrating them with Ringer's lactate drip. We're working a little bit against time and light. So we've got the ninth, second last one and they're a little bit skittish. That was the last and final one with a long tail number 10 done for the day. Pull it off. So, if you have a lot of anti-gamma, you can see that in the area, there are various possibilities, there are various apparitions of the city. In the years past, when there was war, there was a lot of caça furtiva. There were no animals. There were various apparitions of some animals. E agora está para me aparecer aqui, tá eu? Yesterday it was high tension. That all happened smoothly. We got the cheetah into the crates. They've overnighted right here at the headquarters. And today we're going to be loading them onto these aircraft and flying them to Mozambique.
of Chief Justice. In recent years, our foundation has decided to protect ecosystems. By protecting vast landscapes from top to bottom, everything benefits. What do you think, Mary? I love it. They're beautiful, aren't they? Oh, they are. Unbelievable. If you can keep two million acres intact, it's not just about cheetahs and lions. It's about everything that inhabits that two million acres. When we fly over this delta with all its abundance, it's not hard to imagine a pair of cheetahs sitting out on the side of a termite mound looking at all the wildlife. But there haven't been cheetah here for probably a hundred years or more. It's taken an enormous amount of work to restore this landscape to what it is today. It's taken the better part of 25 years of anti-poaching. We needed to totally involve our local community. They needed to feel that they were part and parcel of this whole operation. And without one complementing the other, we would never have achieved what we have today. Now we have the cheetahs in the boma. The plan is to release them within about a month. The reason for putting them into bomas rather than the releasing them straight away is you want to give the cheetahs some time to acclimatize. You also want the cheetahs to recover and get to know each other in their new habitat. So after the boma period, the next step is a really exciting one, and that's to release them out into this ecosystem. Exciting a little nerve-wracking. <laughs> Before you release the animals, it's important to know that the animals are relaxed. We'll open up the gates and we'll drag a carcass out there so that they follow you out of the gate. The culmination of all of these efforts is when these animals walk out of the boma and as they cross that threshold, they truly become wild. It's really important to understand these introductions and get really good at them. Introducing cheetah into Marameo is increasing the size of our meadow population by 30% in one relocation. So we're out here looking at the vastness of this floodplain. Even though we can't see the cheetahs, we know they're out there somewhere. <laughs> 